I would define as real direct experience. Now, the tricky thing is, a sense perception comes closer to direct experience than a conceptual assessment about the sense perception, mm. right? But it's not yet direct experience. So what I mean by that is like, if I touch this table, and I just stay present with that sensation, and the visual of it, that is a more that's closer to direct experience, therefore truth, than whatever I could write on a piece of paper about that. Does it make sense? Yeah. So there's, there's degrees of moving away from the truth of reality of direct experience, and into this sort of conceptual imaginary framework, which might have valid descriptions of the real thing. But the map is not the territory. Mm -hmm. And it's very easy to forget this as a human mind, that the map is not the territory, we may know it, we may remember it sometimes, but we act completely forgetting it, lost in a world of concepts for most of our day, thinking, assuming, thinking, assuming, so many assumptions in the back of our minds that we never realize we have, and that completely filter our experience and allow us to only perceive this much of existence and believe it is the world and that it actually exists and that we're visitors to reality, which is the world, but it's complete make believe. Everything we've ever experienced is an imagination, an experience, a subset of a projection of direct experience of the power to know. So closer than the conceptual framework would be staying closer to the direct experience of the senses, for example, or of the intuition, or of whatever faculty of knowing we do, but the senses isn't a good example, because people can relate to it. So me touching this table is more real than me describing to you something about me touching the table, mm -hmm. or my findings, that's more conceptual, it's farther away in the realm of projection, it's, it's farther removed from the source of the projection. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay, so, but it's not yet direct, me touching this table, often people think, oh, that's direct experience. And that's kind of the beginning stages of mindfulness, where that comes in, it's like, oh, feel your breath, mm -hmm. come back to direct experience. Mm. Right. Oh, okay. there's, there's greater peace. Why? Because you're getting closer to the source mm -hmm. of life, which is extremely peaceful. And perfect reality is perfect. Perfection. The closer we are to reality, the more we experience perfection, like total perfection. So when we relax our thinking mind, our conceptual projections, and we come back to the projection of our senses, and our immediate environment and our breath and our body, we call it becoming more present, which is not necessarily inaccurate. But we then still assume that this is direct experience. Like, no, I directly experienced the apple falling from the tree because I saw it with my own eyes. I directly experienced the table because I touched it with my hands and I saw it with my own eyes and I heard the sound. Again, major assumption. All I really know is images, sensation, and sound. But none of these is the table. Right? Right. Mm -hmm. So I can see light, or so we assume. And then where I position that in my mind as having the location of being over here, and then I bring my hand, my other faculty of knowing things, which is sensing feeling. Now I feel it and I hear it while I rub the table. So all of this produces the image, the assumption in my mind that there's an actual table, but I've never experienced the table. Nobody has ever experienced an object. That's one step further. But to start with one example, you have never experienced a table. Right, because all that all that same stuff mm -hmm. could happen in a dream. Right? Like, mm -hmm. your mind can make any of that up. Yeah, you can hear a table in a dream, you can see a table in a dream, you can touch a table in a dream. But did you experience a table? Right? You have ears in your dream, or so you assume you have eyes in your dream. So you assume you can touch people, you can make love with them, you can have arguments with them. But did you really experience the people? So 
me saying, okay, now I'm directly experiencing the table is another assumption. And this is why people don't want to go there, because it's scary, right? <laughs> huh. Then what happens to my world if I take this any farther? Well, it disappears. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Deal with it. But what reveals itself is existence. This is why the true scientist well, is the most courageous entity imaginable. Because they're actually interested in the truth and not assuming. That's why I call the sages the true scientists. And they're very, very rare, very few and far in between. So... Now, so then even more direct, more scientific than saying I experienced the table would be to say, I experienced sensation, which I labeled table, I experienced sensation, I experienced color and shape. And then I kind of put them together. And I labeled I called that I used language, I used my conceptual brain function to then assume, to call it, I am touching a table. That's That would be even more direct, right? Less assumption. Because I'm not saying mm. there is a table. Mm -hmm. I'm saying I experience sensation, sight, and I experience the thought or label of mm -hmm. the table. The assumption, I experience the assumption. So now I'm even more direct in my experience. But that's still not direct experience. <laughs> mm -hmm. So fun. And you only know it's a table because you were taught that as a child. Also, nice. Well, yeah, you, so we assume it's a table mm -hmm. because that's what we, the label we've been taught. Yeah. So what would be more direct than that? Like, how, why is me saying I experienced a thought table? Mm-hmm. I experienced sensation and I experienced visual imagery. Why is that still an assumption? I still have to talk about it. I still have to memorize it. I still have to refer back to it. I still have to conceptualize it. It's not my present experience. But neither is the stable now, even though it's now here. Neither is my thought about the table. Basically, the now itself, if you can strip it entirely naked, from all assumption. Indeed, the world of the senses and the thinking mind disappears. And what remains is the direct knowledge, the direct perception, the direct experience of directly experiencing, of direct experience. The only true direct experience is the awareness of awareness. Everything else is one step removed from that reality into projection, into assumption. Mm -hmm. All you can ever truly say, and I know people are not going to get this right away, but maybe take it on faith to some degree and try it out. The deeper you go and investigate, what am I actually experiencing? Eventually, all that remains is I am. All that remains is I am. And then even that assumption goes, that's the final stage. <laughs> even that experience disappears. And then, then there is true, infinite reality. Because you see, the entire illusion, or what people call the world or creation, the entire world of experiences, of phenomenal experiences, they're all rooted in the I am, in the direct experiencer, in the knower. So when the knower knows the knower directly, without any external means, without secondary instruments, when the instrument of knowledge knows itself directly, without assumption of the body, because you've never experienced your body either, that's an assumption as well, if you're honest. But this boggles people's minds, like, what do you mean? <laughs> I experience my body all day long. And actually, no, you've never experienced your body. And it's like, either they think I'm completely nuts, or they have sort of maybe even a little bit of a scare moment, like uh, something in me understands that, oh, holy fuck, mm -hmm. I don't want to go there, right? Mm -hmm. Which is mm -hmm. fine, you should take it slowly, at a pace you can integrate this deconstruction of what you think is reality. But if you want to know reality, 
you have to deconstruct everything you assume. That's why there's not a lot of true scientists out there because who wants this? There's no payoff to the mind, to the ego. But the payoff is infinite bliss, the infinite bliss of reality, knowing itself, the infinite perfection. Reality is perfection. It's beyond description, it's beyond the mind, it's beyond the senses, it's beyond the illusion of the body and the world. It exists on its own, eternally, infinitely, beyond time and space. And it is one infinite, absolute, self-comprehensive reality. And when you have that direct experience beyond even the direct experiencer, beyond, beyond even the assumption of I am, the base, the root assumption out of which all other assumptions and projections and experiences appear, the main, the first experience and the constant experience we have when we have any other experience is I am, is consciousness, is the knower. When even that goes, I mean, and here we're already talking about the, the second type of enlightenment. The first type of enlightenment, which is more commonly referred to and understood, is that the I am knows itself. I am that I am. My interpretation of the quote, I am that I am, is a statement of not I am that I am, mm -hmm. which is also a great pointer, but it's actually a statement of what I actually am. It is, I am the very fact that I exist. The fact that I am mm -hmm. is what I am. I That's am cool. that I am. Oh, nice. Right? And people have tried to put commas here and commas there and like, what was the sentence? Mm -hmm. I am the fact, the experience of being. That's what I am. I am that I am. Not I am that mm -hmm. I am. I am that I am. Mm -hmm. That I am is what I am. So that is enlightenment for all intents and purposes. That is going back to the unified, most original experience possible. And then before that, you go beyond experiencing. If you go beyond that, you go beyond all experiencing. You go beyond consciousness. You go beyond the root that which is responsible for every experience, for all of the experience of what we call manifestation. And the entire manifestation disappears when the I am disappears. It already begins to disappear when the I am knows itself, because it's no longer focused on its projections, it's focused on the light of the projector. And if you were to turn around and look into the light of the projector, you might still see some of the images, but if you go deeper into the light, you see just the light. You no longer see Tom Cruise running around at top speed for five minutes. You only see the light, you see the substratum. Now you see the essence of life itself. You know life itself. Every manifestation has at its root this power of knowing. That is enlightenment. Absolute final realization is where even that light disappears and the infinite, uncaused, unborn reality that's beyond all experiencing somehow mysteriously comprehends itself as infinite perfection where there is no other. It's not alone. Well, it is alone, but not as in lonely. It, it's infinite mm. oneness. It's itself. I uh, cannot be described because it's not an experience, <laughs> you see. So, but the first step, the first distortion of that original absolute reality is the first illusion is consciousness, where I am. Then we get thoughts, and feelings and so forth. And this is all, there's all an organization to this. There's an evolutionary impulse to this. There's a hierarchy to this that is intelligently designed by this intelligence, which is sentient. So that's why people have called it God. Once they've disidentified from God, they call it God. But it's really the I am, that I am, is God. So that intelligence can be known directly, can be felt for lack of a better word, experience it directly. That is direct experience. That's the closest to the absolute true reality that we can get with the faculty of consciousness. And we cannot get beyond it without first passing through the door of I am. So reality is absolute, infinite, indescribable perfection, not ever appeared anywhere as an experience, not born. It's therefore the source of all that is. The second closest thing to reality is 
the root of all that is, which is the I amness or the God consciousness. All of this can be accessed directly, not through any physical instrument within the illusion of your assumption of having a body observing things. So if you want to know life, you have to study life, not the world. Very different. What is life? Life is that which is alive. What is alive? Our instruments are not alive. I am alive. Investigate the I sense, the sense, the feeling that everyone has, every baby has it, the feeling of I. I am. Go to that feeling, that direct experience. It will consume your world. It will reveal it to be a flawless appearance, an illusion of the light of consciousness. And then you can go even beyond that in time with practice. And know the reality before any creation ever appeared. So then you also know what was before the Big Bang and what will be after the entire dissolution of this cosmic dance of vibrations and thoughts. And I try to describe this actually in my latest book, which is kind of a fun, uh, kind of plugs into this. We had a dialogue with a friend, a few dialogues. So it's called uh, Spiritual Conversations with a Skeptic. Mm -hmm. I recommend people check it out. It's a fun read. Mm 